Hey everyone in the world of cloud computing, IoT, AI and fintech, I'm Brad Nelson of Nelson Hilliard and here are a few news highlights from this week in the fast moving world of cloud computing. I'd like to thank you all for your support on social media about last week's news and please remember to like, subscribe, comment and share this video with your friends and your colleagues. If you have anything of any interest with regards to cloud computing in your organisation then please drop us a line at media at nelsonhilliard.com. This week Prosperworks raises 53 million to take on Salesforce's CRM. Prosperworks provides a customer relationship manager for G Suite, which was formerly Google Apps for Work. It was founded in 2013 and the San Francisco based startup focuses on helping sales managers and reps manage their teams and workflows better through integration apps like Gmail, Google Contacts and Google Calendar. The co-founder and CEO John Lee makes it clear that the number one priority is to make the CRM more usable. John Lee said in an interview with VentureBeat, we want to do for CRM what Apple did for mobility and John Lee has confirmed that his team is already using artificial intelligence and machine learning capabilities and the new funding will allow the startup to ramp up the efforts around automation and to make the system smarter. He went on to say that Salesforce might have Einstein but if you give Einstein garbage it will give you garbage results and Prosperworks basically wants to become the number one alternative to Salesforce, which is an ambition it isn't afraid to share. This week, Google suddenly removed the YouTube access from the Amazon Echo Show. The video service has been pulled from the smart speaker, which is a move Amazon doesn't seem to be very happy about. Echo Show owners weren't given any advance warning previous to the removal, an Amazon spokesman has confirmed that the service has been pulled in a statement which also implies that the move came as a surprise to them. Google made a change to YouTube. It used to be available to our shared customers on the Echo Show. As of this week, Google has chosen to no longer make YouTube available on the Echo Show without any explanation and without any notification to the customers. There is no technical reason for that decision which is disappointing and hurts both of our customers. In a statement given to The Verge, which first reported the removal of Google, contradicts an Amazon statement, saying that they've been working with the company, but the implementation of YouTube on the Echo Show violates the terms of service. We've been in negotiations with Amazon for a long time, working towards an agreement that provides great experiences for customers on both platforms. Amazon's implementation of the YouTube on Echo Show violates our terms of service, creating a broken user experience. We hope to be able to reach an agreement and resolve these issues very soon. This week saw Luno, which is a Bitcoin wallet and exchange which is based out of Singapore, raise $9 million in a Series B round of funding for market expansion into Europe. Luno said the money will go towards bringing those services to 35 new countries in Europe and the company which has offices already in Singapore, Cape Town and London plans to double its current headcount of 70 staff to support this new sprint, which takes its services to a total of 40 countries worldwide. Luno CEO Marcus Swainpool has said that the expansion might sound quite trivial, but as you probably know, there are not a lot of companies out there offering these kind of services in Europe and certainly not in a very mass market, user-friendly way, and particularly with a really good mobile product coupled with good customer service. As we expand the team and company growth in these countries, we will be rolling out more deposit methods and country localization that we are already working on. The cloud wars continue on from where we left last week with pricing, as Google have announced this week that its cloud service will offer a paper second billing. And this move comes just days after market leader Amazon Web Service, or AWS, made the same announcement. Google's new billing will be available immediately, meaning Google has actually beaten AWS to the line, as AWS's new pricing plan won't actually start until October the 2nd. Per second billing may help keep Google competitive with AWS, but it's unlikely to dramatically affect many customers' wallets. The company said the average user may only save 99 cents a day under the new payment system. Paul Nash, the group product manager of Google's Compute Engine said in a blog post, in most cases, the difference between per minute and per second billing is very small. We estimate it a fraction of a percent. So good luck on the cloud wars guys and I wonder who next is going to jump in on the per second billing team. 
Australian tech company Carbon Track has partnered with New Zealand's largest PV solar company, Solar City. In collaboration with Vodafone New Zealand, the initiative will help accelerate the adoption of clean solar energy and improve energy efficiency across the country. Solar City New Zealand is utilising the patented Carbon Track Internet of Things platform in their Solar Zero offering across New Zealand. Spiros Livadaris, co-founder and managing director of Carbon Track, said, The partnership is good news for energy consumers across New Zealand. Consumers across the globe are fed up with increasing energy prices and want to take back control. They want to understand their energy consumption and cut their energy bills. Andrew Foskett, general manager of Carbon Track, said, Carbon Track has worked closely with solar companies for several years to build intelligent technologies that benefit solar homeowners and improve energy savings. We are incredibly excited to share these amazing technologies with our friends across the ditch. Andrew Booth, the CEO of Solar City, said, The intelligent smart home has arrived, giving Kiwis the ability to buy cheaper, cleaner power locally from their own roof and power their homes the way they choose from smartphones. We are looking forward to assisting New Zealanders in minimalising their electricity bills while moving forward to a more sustainable energy approach. I'm Brad Nelson of Nelson Hilliard and thanks for watching this week's cloud computing and IoT news highlights and please remember to like, subscribe, comment and share this video with your friends and your colleagues. You can also connect with me on LinkedIn and find us on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. So until next week, be good, be safe and keep our clouds secure.